If you added up all the lives lost in all the wars fought in the 20th century, that figure would come to about 108 million people. It's a staggering number, but horrifyingly, it pales in comparison to the lives taken by a pocket-sized assassin. It's a creature responsible for the deaths of between 150 to 300 million people in the last century alone, and to this day, it causes over 600,000 more deaths every year. This is a creature so small you may not even notice it's there, but you can't escape its telltale whining buzz. That's right, mosquitoes. You may think these are just pesky blood-sucking flies, but these bugs are super spreaders of fatal diseases that have plagued humanity since the dawn of civilization. Instinctively, we know to swat them away, but have you ever wondered what would happen if you didn't? What if you let one of these bugs suck your blood and didn't stop it until it was too late? Well, stick around as we discover why letting a mosquito bite you could be the worst mistake you ever make. First, let's learn a bit more about the enemy in question. Well, enemies. Did you know that there are over 3,500 species of mosquitoes on Earth, from the super tiny species that are only 0.1 inches long, just a sliver the size of your fingernail, to the other end of the scale, the jumbo-sized elephant mosquito. Now, these giant mosquitoes are nearly a full inch long. That's about the same size as a cent coin. Now, they get their name from their trunk-like mouths that double as hypodermic needles. But thankfully, these oversized mosquitoes don't have a taste for human blood. Rather, they prefer the sugary nectar from flowers. I mean, thanks, but I still hate it. Technically, there are over 100 species of mosquitoes that we really need to worry about, as they have both a taste for human blood and an ability to spread fatal diseases. Number one on that list is a bug that has been described as the most dangerous creature on Earth, the Anopheles gambiae mosquito. It's this vampiric bug that has the capacity to spread malaria, a parasitic infection that's hosted in the liver, eventually infecting the body's red blood cells, causing life-threatening complications. In 2020, there were an estimated 241 million cases of malaria, and an insane concentration of 95% of these cases occurred in Africa alone. Here, the hot climate allows the Anopheles mosquito to survive year-round, enabling them to constantly feed and infect millions of victims. Now, without effective treatment, malaria can be deadly. In 2004 alone, it was the lead cause of nearly a million deaths. However, recent aid efforts to distribute insecticide-treated bed nets to rural communities brought this staggering number down by more than a third in 2020. The insecticide destroys the mosquitoes whilst protecting those who sleep under the nets from getting bitten as mosquitoes are most active at night. Even though the mortality rate has come down, a death toll of over 600,000 people per year is still a horrifying statistic. Man, I thought only a math pop quiz could make me cry over numbers. But how could one disease keep the Grim Reaper so busy? Well, that's because malaria has millions of tiny flying carriers, the female Anopheles mosquito. Weirdly, it's only the female mosquitoes that feast on blood, as it's full of the proteins required to produce their eggs. Meanwhile, male mosquitoes are happy to chill in the park and enjoy some sweet flower nectar. Hmm, I wonder if those female mosquitoes know my ex-wife. She was also a pain in the neck and a real bloodsucker too. Well, probably not because this species has been around for over 46 million years and has had millennia to master a perfect set of skills to hunt humans. Now, I don't know if you knew this, but a mosquito can detect the carbon dioxide you exhale on your breath from over 30 feet away. From there, it flies closer, picking up on the scent of your body odor. And once it's close enough to detect your body heat, it lands and tastes your skin with sensors on its legs until it finds the perfect place to bite. From there, it puckers up its proboscis, the mosquito's mouth, which is a seriously nasty thing to see up close because it acts like a sheath to six needle-like mouth parts. These two mouth parts are known as the maxillae, serrated structures like dinner knives that literally saw through your flesh to the closest blood vessel. Once a blood vessel is pierced, the mosquito uses its other mouth parts to spread the tissue apart where it then inserts a straw-like structure inside, slurping up your blood like the world's worst milkshake. 
Ugh. Well, the good news, at least, is that female mosquitoes only ingest 0.01 milliliters of blood per meal. That's literally a tiny drop in the ocean of your entire blood supply. The female mosquito even has a sensory nerve in her abdomen which warns her when she's getting too full. Nevertheless, if you were to sever the sensory nerve, just as this scientist did, then the mosquito would swell to an enormous size and keep sucking until it burst. Well, talk about instant revenge. So, if a mosquito only drinks a tiny bit of your blood, it must be harmless, right? Well, no, not even slightly, because mosquitoes operate by sip feeding. They don't take all of their blood meal from one source. Rather, they take a buffet of meals from multiple humans and, as a result, rapidly spread disease. The Anopheles mosquito that plagues Africa is so deadly because when it feeds on an individual infected with malaria, it also ingests the plasmodium parasites that cause the disease. When it buzzes off and bites another human, its saliva is injected into the wound as it feeds. This is because its saliva is full of anticoagulants that prevent your blood clotting. But the plasmodium parasites previously ingested also come along for the ride and so find their way into your body. The mosquitoes themselves are totally unaffected, but for humans, the plasmodium parasites pass to the liver, where they multiply rapidly and start invading the red blood cells produced there. Symptoms of the infection then arise, such as a feverish temperature, muscle pain, vomiting, and diarrhea. The loss of red blood cells can also cause anemia and jaundice, a condition where the skin turns yellow. If medical treatment isn't sought quickly, it can be fatal. So fatal, it's led to a chronically high mortality rate in Central Africa, particularly, and sadly, among children under five years old. Without a doubt, malaria is the most devastating illness spread by mosquitoes, but it isn't the only one. In fact, there's a whole list of other horrible diseases you can catch from one of these bugs' bites. If you're traveling through any tropical climates, watch out for Aedes aegypti. This mosquito is the carrier for a whole range of diseases. Starting with the mildest, dengue fever is a disease that can cause nausea, vomiting, and a bad rash. It can be caught by people visiting Asia, Africa, the Caribbean, or South America. Basically, all the best tourist spots are likely to give you a dengue fever souvenir. But not to worry, as for most people, the fever will pass within a week or so. However, 1 in 20 people can contract severe dengue, a disease that can result in shock, internal bleeding, and even be fatal. Man, those are some odds I would not want to gamble with. But you'd be taking an even worse risk if you were bitten by an Aedes or Anopheles mosquito carrying parasitic worms. These parasites can surf through your bloodstream until they reach the lymph system, resulting in lymphatic filariasis. This is a disease that affects over 120 million people worldwide, mainly across the subtropics of Asia, Africa, and the West Pacific. Now, most people are asymptomatic and never develop clinical symptoms. For others, though, the disease can cause some ballooning effects, literally. A small percentage of people will develop lymphedema, a massive swelling of fluid in the arms, legs, or for some unlucky guys, the <coughs> family jewels. This giant swelling affects the function of the lymph system, making it difficult for the body to fight off germs and infections. This can also cause bacterial infections to occur in the skin, resulting in a thickening and hardening of the skin in a condition known as elephantiasis. And no amount of moisture can fix this dry skin nightmare. Overall, this is a disease that can lead to some real body horror, but it's not nearly as shocking as the effects of a disease Aedes aegypti mosquitoes can spread to pregnant women. These mosquitoes also act as carriers for the Zika virus, a disease that has left a devastating impact on a whole generation in Brazil. Between April 2015 and November 2016, Brazil was overrun by a colossal Zika epidemic, resulting in some 1.5 million cases. Zika is a virus that can cause symptoms such as a mild fever, a headache, and a rash. Contracting Zika is typically not fatal for an adult, but if a pregnant woman were to become infected with Zika, then this can cause a birth defect known as microcephaly, a condition where a baby is born with an abnormally small head. And in Brazil's epidemic, over 3,500 newborn babies were affected. Sadly, this isn't a condition you can just grow out of. 
Rather, the children affected usually develop lifelong learning disabilities due to their reduced brain size. And Zika is still present in Brazil today, being transmitted by those damn mosquitoes. And I'm sorry to say I have even more bad news. The Aedes aegypti mosquito is rapidly spreading across the globe. It's recently colonized Madeira, southern parts of Russia, and the southern states of the U.S., such as Florida, Georgia, and even reaching as far as Texas. But on the bright side, the mosquito populations in the U.S. aren't heavily infected, so outbreaks of Zika, as well as dengue fever, have only been small and limited in area. But if these mosquito populations pick up any scarier parasites, then I'm moving to Antarctica. Since the best defense against a mosquito colony is a harsh, cold winter, as freezing temperatures can eradicate adult mosquitoes and force those remaining bugs to hibernate. So, if anyone needs me, I'll be in my igloo. And there we have it. The answer to the original question is, you should always stop a mosquito in its tracks. Letting one of these bugs land on your arm is like playing a game of Russian roulette. Best to smack these bloodsuckers out of the air on sight. You know what else to smack? Those like and subscribe buttons down below. Hey, don't worry, you won't catch any diseases from them, I, I think. Unless your screen and mouse is covered in filth or bacteria. Hey, how often you clean your hardware is definitely a you problem, my guy. But with that said, there are other creatures out there that you definitely don't want to become your problem. Tick Tick Boom There's no better way to enjoy the great outdoors than with a camping trip. Breathing in the fresh air, roasting s'mores over an open fire, hiking through the forest. Uh, well, as perfect as it sounds, you need to be careful walking through the long grass, or you could end up with a hitchhiker embedded in your flesh. While you might have thought spiders were the creepiest eight-legged bugs, let me introduce you to the vilest member of the arachnid family, ticks. With 900 tick species worldwide, we can divide these cursed bugs into two categories hard-bodied and soft-bodied ticks. Just as the name suggests, hard-bodied ticks have a hard outer shell and take on a more spider-like appearance, while soft-bodied ticks lack this outer shell and take on an even more sinister appearance. Oh god, if I saw that thing in the grass, I'd set the whole forest on fire. Except these images have been blown up by a microscope, and in reality, an adult tick is often smaller than the size of a sesame seed. So, even if you keep your eyes peeled, it'd be difficult to spot one in the wild. It's this ability to go unnoticed that forms the tick's key adaptation to ensure its survival. Ticks go through four simple stages of life. They hatch from an egg, transition from a six-legged larva to an eight-legged nymph, and finally emerge as an adult tick. But in order to pass to the next stage of their life cycle, they must gorge themselves on blood. To access this malicious meal, ticks will latch themselves onto a host. They do this through a process called questing. This is where a tick climbs the edges of a blade of grass or a plant leaf and holds out their front legs, waiting for a warm-blooded animal or human to brush past and they can hook onto. From there, they crawl around your body until they find just the right spot to bite through your skin and feed on a vein. Now, unlike mosquitoes, ticks take a long time to finish their dinner. Undisturbed, a nymph tick can stay attached for three to four days, while a female adult tick can stay latched onto your body for up to 10 days. And while mosquitoes are polite enough to use a straw, ticks are super messy eaters because they repeatedly regurgitate all the binged blood they've drunk back up, like nature's own college frat boys. A fully engorged tick will only have extracted half a milliliter of blood, but in doing so, would have sucked up and regurgitated 15 milliliters of blood. Yuck. And if you thought that was gross, check out this before and after shot from a single 8 to 10 day feeding session. That's right. After a tick is finished feeding, its body is engorged and is able to grow up to five times its original size. Jeez, and you thought these things couldn't get any nastier looking. But the sight of ticks isn't the only nightmarish thing about them. Rather, throughout a tick's lifetime, they will jump from host to host and in doing so, will carry each host's diseases along with them. When these ticks regurgitate, they aren't just throwing back up your blood, but also infecting you with parasites they picked up from their previous hosts. 
Ticks can even cross the species barrier, spreading diseases from animals to humans, such as the black-legged tick, a tick that latches onto both deer and humans as hosts. In doing so, this tick can spread a bacteria known as Borrelia burgdorferi and cause an infection known as Lyme disease. Does that condition ring a bell? It's an illness many famous faces have received treatment for, like Justin Bieber and Bella Hadid. Because being a predominantly tick-borne illness, it's disturbingly widespread across the U.S. Lyme disease is an illness that can cause a bad fever, headache, chills, and muscle pain, but is most commonly identified by the telltale red bullseye rash that shows up on the skin surrounding the tick bite. So if you see this rash show up on your body, you've probably been bitten by a tick without even realizing it. But not to worry, as most of the time, Lyme disease can be treated with antibiotics. However, delayed treatment can result in a condition known as late Lyme disease that arises months after the tick bite, which can cause problems with dizziness, nerve pain, painful joints, and even facial palsy, a condition which causes the loss of muscle tone in the face, leading to drooping on one side. Maybe that explains why Justin looks so moody these days. And deer ticks aren't the only ones to watch out for. A single bite from a Lone Star tick could make you a mandatory vegetarian. You see, Lone Star tick bites can transmit a sugar molecule known as alpha-gal into your body, causing alpha-gal syndrome. In some people, this can cause an immune system reaction, resulting in a sudden severe allergy to red meat. Crazy, right? Let's hope militant vegans don't start weaponizing Lone Star ticks. But don't let tick-borne diseases put you off enjoying the great outdoors, as in general, ticks need to be attached for 36 to 48 hours before they can transmit their diseases. So as long as you check your clothing and carry out regular tick checks on your body, you should be fine. If you do find a tick on your person, use a pair of tweezers to gently pry it off. But never, ever crush a tick as doing so could cause it to inject all of its toxic parasites into your body. Ugh. Hopefully, the clock is tick ticking away the time until scientists work out how to finally eradicate these bugs for good. Itchy Dreams Now this next creature is really the stuff of nightmares. If you're ever in your bedroom and detect a strange rusty smell, you may want to flip the mattress over because there's a chance you'll find thousands of brown dots that may look like someone attacked your mattress with a sharpie. And if those brown dots are accompanied by crusty translucent flakes, then I have bad news. You have bed bugs. Though it's unlikely you'll find the live bugs themselves, as they're active at night and hide during the day. And I hate to tell you, but those brown dots are actually their poop stains. These fecal spottings mainly consist of digested human blood. Yeah, these nasty bedroom lurkers are munching on you during the night. This digested blood contains a large amount of iron, the source of the strange, rusty smell. Meanwhile, those crusty flakes are actually molted shell casings, as bedbugs molt their exoskeletons after transitioning between each of their five life cycle stages, from an egg to a nymph, and finally an adult being. An adult bedbug is smaller than the size of an apple seed, with their flat, oval brown bodies only reaching some four or five millimeters long. And as the name implies, bedbugs live out their whole life cycle in the crevices of your mattress. While you may like to have Oreos as a midnight snack, bedbugs like to feast on your blood. Not that you'd realize, as when bedbugs bite you, they release a small amount of anesthetic in their saliva. You only find out you've been bitten the next morning, when clusters of red swollen bite marks appear. They typically invade your home after an overnight trip by catching a ride from the outside world into your home in your clothing. The good news is bedbugs don't feed every single night, rather they can go several weeks without eating. But this can mean bedbugs are unwanted roommates for months without you noticing. Surprisingly, bedbugs aren't the worst bunk buddy to have. Though more than 40 pathogens have been detected in bedbugs, there's been no conclusive evidence that they transmit any diseases to humans. So the worst thing you'll catch from bedbugs is an itchy rash. Nevertheless, I certainly don't want to have any sleepovers with these creepy bloodsuckers. 
So if bed bugs make themselves at home in your house, you'd better put up a new roommate listing for an exterminator. <laughs> Total buzz kills. Some say bigger is always better, but there's at least one thing that gets worse the bigger it gets, and that's the flying terror of Southeast Asia, the horrifyingly nicknamed Asian murder hornet. Typically, Eurasian hornets are one inch long, about the size of a paperclip. While across the globe, murder hornets dwarf their Eurasian cousins with queen giant Asian hornets, measuring in at over two inches long, more than double the size. The worker hornets serving under the queen are only slightly smaller. And while you may think two inches is tiny, keep in mind that as a hornet is scaled up, so is its stinger. A honeybee stinger is only one sixteenth of an inch long, while a giant hornet stinger is a quarter of an inch long and can puncture through a specially designed bee suit. These monster hornets put these wicked stingers to use in insect warfare, as they get their nickname from their brutal reputation of wiping out bee colonies. Murder hornets can destroy over 30,000 worker bees in a colony invasion. After the worker bees have been annihilated, the hornets then abduct the larvae and pupae, taking them back to their own nest to feed their baby hornets. Thankfully though, murder hornets don't typically sting humans unless provoked to defend their hives. But if you do get on the bad side of a murder hornet, then you're in for a hellish bout of pain. The sensation experienced by those unfortunate enough to have been stung firsthand has been described as like being stabbed by a red-hot needle. And don't forget, unlike honeybees whose serrated stingers get caught in the skin and pulled out, meaning they can only sting you once, hornets don't have a serrated stinger, so it doesn't get stuck in the skin. That means they can sting you dozens of times over. Yay! But why is the sting they deliver so painful? Well, it contains a toxic cocktail of chemicals designed purely to cause pain and swelling, as well as an additional component called mastoparin. Not found in bee venom, mastoparin can combine with other chemicals to break down blood and muscle cells. In addition, the histamine in a hornet stinger can trigger a fatal allergic reaction in 1.2 to 3.5% of the population. It's so severe that according to a 2007 study, murder hornets are linked to between 30 to 50 deaths every year in Japan alone. Most casualties are from anaphylactic shock or sudden cardiac arrest. Yeah, this bug is really living up to the title of murder hornet after all. Now, despite how lethal a murder hornet can be, honeybees are technically more venomous. Which seems counterintuitive, right? Well, insect venom is measured by the LD50 scale. This is the quantity of venom necessary to be fatal to 50% of a test group of mice. The less venom required for a lethal dose, the more dangerous the substance. A honeybee's venom has an LD50 of 2.8 mg per kilogram, whilst the giant hornet's venom has an LD50 of 4.1 mg per kilogram. So hornets must inject a far larger dose of venom in their stings than honeybees in order to overpower their victims. But to make up for this, hornets can sting repeatedly, delivering up to 10 times more venom than honeybees. So to reach a life-threatening toxic dose, a person would only need to be stung by a couple hundred hornets versus around 1,000 honeybees. And unfortunately, this species is now invasive to the United States. Everything gets bigger in the US, but if you ask me, giant hornets are one thing that should have stayed extra small. Hay fever. If you ever go for a roll in the hay, literally, not euphemistically, if you catch my drift, you might want to have a quick look at what exactly is in the hay pile first. Because other than startling a few horses, you may also end up crushing a blister beetle. Just as the name implies, these toxic bugs produce cantharidin, a nasty chemical that can cause the skin to erupt in huge blisters. But not only that, if someone were to accidentally consume a beetle, the unleashed catheridin could destroy the lining of the gastrointestinal tract. Ouch. Different blister beetle species can range between various rainbow colors, 
but don't worry, it's unlikely you'll be mistaking this one-inch beetle for a tasty Jolly Rancher anytime soon. The real danger these biohazard beetles pose is to farm animals, as blister beetles are attracted to alfalfa hay. It's a hay that's commonly used for cattle and horses, as it's a great source of protein and fiber. If the beetles are ground up in the hay as it's processed, this can contaminate the hay fibers with toxic cantharidin, and ingesting as few as one or two blister beetles can be fatal, even to an animal as big as a horse. Man, blister beetles aren't a bug to foal around with. Which one of these dangerous bugs would you least like to come across? Let me know down in the comments below, and thanks for watching.